Hi, Tidra. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm very good, darling. I can't complain. Good. Uh, thanks for taking the time to do this interview. You know, I've been looking forward to doing it for a while now. You know, I've been trying to track you down and uh, glad to finally have you here. Okay, cool. Um, you know, yeah, uh, first of all, you know, for all your fans, uh, you know, and myself as well, who've been wondering what you've been up to, just give us a quick update, uh, what you're currently working on. Um, basically, I'm right now touring with the Lady Hennessy Tour. Mm -hmm. Earlier this year, I put out a mixtape called Royal Patience, where I just put a few original, uh, about, I think it was about 14 or 12, something like that, original songs that were songs that I had worked on when I was going through the process of making records for Young Linus, and I uh, shot a video for Kissing Never Taste So Speak, but I decided that I was going to do a little bit of remix into the record, um, adding some strings and different things like that, so I held off on the video so I could recut it according to how I uh, changed the record, and I'm also shooting at the end of this month a video for Are You For Real, and um, hmm. with the tour, the Lady Nancy tour, and the two videos come in, you know, my, my goal is to bring more awareness to the fact that I'm here and I'm doing music, because some people don't even realize I'm still doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. You know, I've read on your Twitter that, um, you know, about the Lady Hennessy tour, and you mentioned some dates you've been doing with that. You know, how did this opportunity come uh -huh. about, and, you know, how has the experience been with that? It's been really wonderful. I'm gay fans. I mean, I'm becoming aware of that I have fans in areas that I didn't even know. You know, mm -hmm. I go to places that I don't expect people to really know who I am, and I find out that there are people that know who I am in that city. So it helps you from a marketing standpoint moving forward, you know. When you're indie, you have to look at everything. Yeah. An indie artist doesn't just get to be an artist. You have to be an artist. You have to be a, a marketing analyst. You have to be a manager, a, a person that can write video treatments. You have to know how to mix records. You got to know how to, to produce. You just have to know everything mm -hmm. because everything falls back on you. There is, you know, you have a team, but the team is pretty much headed up by you and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So um, that helps a lot. The Lady Hennessy Tour helps a lot in knowing what geographical areas that I actually have fans that I wasn't aware of. Yeah. Okay, very cool. And you also mentioned the Royal Patience mixtape you uh, put out earlier this year. You know, I had a chance to hear it. I'm mm -hmm. a big fan of it. Um, you know, how do you feel the reception has been from your fans with that? Oh, it's been really, really good. Yeah. It's been really, really, really good. I mean, to me, mixtapes are not so good to me. You know, mm -hmm. they're just records that I throw out, you know. Okay. They're never completed. Mm -hmm. They're never mixed. You know, they're just like half-assed records. So <laughs> when people take those and they like them, I'm very appreciative because that's not my. That's why I don't call them. People are like, oh, that could have been an album. No, it couldn't have been an album because I didn't have the money to make it the way yeah. I really wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just raw. Mixtape yeah. to me means raw. That means it's not complete. That means it's not of album quality. I think that my album complex simplicity was of a certain quality. So what I want to put out as an album has to be of that quality and better. Mm -hmm. So I don't really look at it. I mean, it's just half bad songs to me. You know, they're not complete. They're nice, but they're not complete. They're just nice, you know? Yeah. But I'm appreciative that people like the nice shit because that really <laughs> uh, excites me about when I really get to just complete everything and do things to the level and quality that I want to. Then that makes me excited about mm -hmm. how they're going to react to that. Well, you had me fooled, though, because these songs I'm hearing on your mixtape are a lot better than most of the other stuff out there right now. I just got to put that out there. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I mean, that makes me feel good. I mean, I write records and I want people to connect with the records, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I really want people to like them, but at the end of the day, it's just a self-expression that I'm doing, and it's really about me releasing whatever that emotion is and, and singing and, you know, fulfilling this purpose I have. Mm -hmm. So when people take to it, it just makes me very happy because, I mean, you know, I'm pleasing myself, but I'm pleasing somebody else, too. Yeah, cool. And you mentioned you're shooting a video for Are You For Real? Yeah. Oh. I'm actually supposed to get on the phone with uh, the director, Phil the God, who's an up-and-coming director who's done, you know, work with Gucci Man, Sierra, a lot of these people, but more than anything, it's not the name that he's worked with, it's his work. He's really a mm -hmm. quality. He's, uh, I found him through Kareem Johnson, who's a producer that's been in the game for years, and it's a new talent that he has, and I'm really excited about working with him because I'm a person that likes things that are really simple. Mm -hmm. I like simple because I think simple to me equates to classic and timeless. Yep. And a lot of times, people don't know how to do simple. Yep. People want to do all this extra, you know, which is one of the issues I ran through with complex, I mean, not complex, simplicity with. Kids never take 
complete that mm-hmm. project and getting it finished within a half of because of dealing with someone who doesn't understand simplicity. You know, I think that sometimes it's very hard for people to do something simple and of quality rather than just do something that's major and blown out. Yeah. And I like I like timeless classic stuff, so I think it's going to be a great connection between Phil and I for the Are You For Real record. Cool. I'm glad you actually chose that because that's my favorite song on that, on that mixtape. It's cool, you know, when I'm putting, um, like, so for instance, with these records, I'll tell you they're not done, so since I'm doing videos for them, mm-hmm. I'm completing them. Yeah. I'm just distinctively invested in completing them, you know, as far as the kisses never taste so sweet, I'm putting strings in it, you know, a string arrangement and different drops and things that I didn't do before, just do it out there. Are you for real? I'm putting live bass and putting a couple oh, wow. more drops, you know, underneath what's already there, but just I'm kind of putting more thickness and meat the record mm-hmm. the way I would have done it if I was putting it out as an actual record on my album so okay. I'm excited about it you know people say I mean not people say but I think in my mind gosh I put that out so long ago but when you're working off your own money it takes time yeah. and that that follow my music they appreciate it whenever they get it you know what I mean so mm-hmm. they keep me going because sometimes not so much that I want to quit never I never want to quit because I love what I do but it gets overwhelmingly frustrating and kind of stressful to keep this brand going by myself, you know? Yeah, yeah that's understandable. Um, a- another favorite of mine from the mixtape, and if you could just give me some background about this song and how you put it together and everything, is the song Everybody Rock? Oh, yeah, that was done with my, my good friend, uh, Trackademics, Jason. He is a producer out of the Bay Area, um, Oakland specifically, and he's really, really, really dope. He's also an artist as well. People should Google him. Trackademics is really dope. And um, we have a really good connection. He was a fan of, of Complex Simplicity. Okay. And so he produces music for me from that standpoint, which a lot of times producers send me stuff and never heard my music before. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they send me a record that would be good for somebody else, but I have a particular style to what I do. Not that I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to reach out and branch out, but it has to be within my style. You know, I, I want to go to another level within my style. I don't want to try to do something totally different. Academic state, he t- gives me different sounds within what I do, you know, mm-hmm. that complements, I should say, what I do. And I think we work really well together. We have a couple of records that we're working on now for the Young Lions Project. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just, I write about, you know, what I feel. That's all. And yeah. I really would love to fall in love. I really would love for, to have a great relationship, you know. But at the end of the day, when I, you, you listen to the verses, I am what I am. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't really make me something new. So if you're going to love this over here, you just got to love it for what it is. You know, yeah. I guess that it comes with age. You're very comfortable with yourself. And as it comes to problems, you can't, it's not as easy to fall into something when you know what you want and you know what you are. So yeah. that's kind of what that song is about. Okay, cool. And uh, another song I got to ask you about because... Uh, it's it's a favorite of you know readers of my site is the collaboration you did with uh, Raheem Devon on Get Yours from one of your mm-hmm. previous mixtapes. You know how did this collaboration come about and you know what was it like working with him? Uh, Raheem is dope as shit. Let me just say that, yeah. and, and I'm saying that from the standpoint of he's really really fresh as an artist, but he's really really um he's uh what's the word I'm looking for? He is for the grind, you know, mm-hmm. he's uh, extremely determined, and we ran across each other the first time, I was at Quad Studio in New York working, and he was in Quad Studio working across the hall for me, and he came in, uh, and we introduced ourselves to each other, and I listened to some of his stuff, he listened to some of mine, we, uh, I already respected him, this wasn't the first time I met him, this is the first time we really spoke on that level, the first time I met him, I was in Baltimore doing a show, mm-hmm. and I met him after a show. But the first time we met, you know, talking about music or whatever, it was when we were in the studio and we said we were going to do something with each other. Then we came across one another. Um, that night I was working on that record that we ended up doing, but he didn't do it that night. We, okay. just, we just decided we were going to, you know, work together. Then we would come across each other on the circuit of just grinding on the underground. So artists, you know, mm-hmm. he's doing a show, I'm doing a show in the same city or same bill or whatever. And that's kind of how we came across each other and... No, actually, we did do that record that night. Okay. We finished it that night, because that's what was amazing to me, because he came right in and did Roy's verse, which was amazing. And um, I can't write that quick. I'm just not that quick at writing. <laughs> I have to think, listen to it, you know, do whatever I do to get myself in the zone. And, but 
he just knocked it out and was really fresh. And uh, and that's probably how I got that record. And we both believe in what we're talking about, so mm-hmm. it was real cool. Yeah, I love that song. It's a really good collaboration. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I always thought this that collaboration was a little ironic because, you know, from my point of view, yourself and Raheem, to me, from what I saw, were some of the first, you know, release mixtapes in the R&B genre. You know, these days it's a lot more common, but back then, you know, I didn't see it as much. You know, what made you de- decide to originally yeah. do mixtapes? Well, it started out because my first mixtape came out before my album. Yeah. And it was really raw. You know, I was younger, way younger then, and I was, like, way more uh, from a ghetto perspective, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I just wanted to do it because TVP was taking forever to put out my record. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I mean, I had minimal push. Yeah. Not that I'm not grateful, but I had minimal push because I don't think they knew how to do much more than that, you know. And um, I just wanted to do my part. I didn't know what to do. I just wanted to put out music, like, Listen, I do that kind of music, but I do this kind of music too, you know? Even though I'm, what I'm doing sounds like this, it's not like I can't do that, and I'm a writer. Mm-hmm. So I'm constantly writing records, I'm constantly getting tracks, I'm constantly inspired, and I'm, I don't make music because I want to make money, I make music because I have to. Yep. Now, if I make money from it, that's great, you yep. know? But I have to write songs, and that's part of me feeling good, you know? It's part of me feeling uh, like I'm fulfilling this purpose that God has given me. Mm-hmm. So I would just write through these records, and it was cool to me to just take somebody's record in the beginning that was already done and just add my hook to it, yeah. or take a beat that was made that I really love and then create a whole new song over it. You know, that was just fun to mm-hmm. me. And at the time, uh, Raphael Steve would let me use his studio to go in and just do records, and uh, he allowed me to come in and knock it out, you know, every now and then just do records. So why, should, why wouldn't I just make records and then just put it out and it was really raggedy you know mm-hmm. it was very raggedy the first mixtape because I just wanted to put it out and then the second one came about from me not even knowing I had bands and then starting to travel and getting requests for doing shows because I was just thrown into this even though I was doing wardrobe style and I didn't know much about you know getting a book in it. I've never had a book in each mm-hmm. my manager books me it's an all in house team and you know a family team and we would get requests and then you go to these different places, Europe, you know, D.C., Atlanta, all these different places. And people love it, you know, it's like in my music and they're singing along. And we, we're really honing our skills as live performers. So the second uh, mixtape, Live from the Jungle, was only right for people to see, like, I can do this live. I'm not just on the record doing it. I do this live. And that's part of uh, the experience of, you know, myself as an artist and what I do is, one thing on a record, but when you see it live, it's a totally different thing, it's a totally different energy. Yeah. So that was what that came from. And then Lionheart, it came from exactly that. Trying to be strong in the midst of all of it. Everything was crumbling around me. Including, mm-hmm. you know, TVT was crumbling, but then I got hit with a lawsuit for a song I wrote, and then TVT was crumbling, and I'm trying to, you know, pay a lawyer to get off of TVT. All of these off my money. And on top of that, I had gained this lifestyle that I didn't even realize I had gained. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. I just thought I was making a lot of money, so I could afford this and I could afford that. So I was, just, you know, two homes, you know, two cars, two, you know, just person with nothing that got something and not knowing how to handle it. You just feel like it's going to come forever. So everything was crumbling around me and lionhearted was just that. You know, it was like me being courageous, like, you know, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to tuck my head and go run. I'm going to just put out music. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be courageous. Okay. And that's where I came from, and that came from in royal patience, basically, exact same thing. Uh, not exact same thing, but you know, asking kindly to my fans of the music, hmm. please be patient. I'm trying my best to get this to you. This is what I can give you right now. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I also got to ask you, you know, talk a little bit about your debut album, you know, Complex Simplicity. You know, which is a personal favorite of okay. mine, and I know the the album was really highly regarded by critics and. You know, R&B fans that have heard it, but something that's frustrating to me is a lot of people aren't familiar with it, don't really know you, and I've, I've tried to put people on, but, you know, a lot of people don't really know you. You know, has that ever been frustrating right. to you? No. No? It hasn't. Okay. No. I've never gotten frustrated with that. You know, okay. I just, I don't know, I just, you know, it doesn't really matter how many people know me, I guess. The only thing that really matters to me is the people that do roll with me. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they fuck with me hard. Yeah. That's really the only thing that really matters to me because you don't have to be greedy. 
You know, you don't have to have all the fans in the world, but if you have a solid fan base, which God, I've been so blessed to have a solid fan base. If I have that solid fan base, I mean, I've been able to take care of my children with that since I started from this solid fan base from a album that has become almost cult-like, you mm-hmm. know, in, in the classicness of it. And I'm not saying that in an arrogant way because that's beyond me. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know quite how that whole thing happened. It's just everything aligns correctly. I don't know, you know. So I can't really dwell on the negativity side of it, you know, that people don't know. Okay, they don't know. But mm-hmm. the crazy thing is, like, you know, people get on to it, like, every day. Mm-hmm. Like, it just came out yesterday. Yeah. Or say, oh, I just heard your new record. You know, it's like, what's the record? <laughs> Royal patients, no complex simplicity is really amazing. Like I can listen to it from the beginning to the end, mm-hmm. and that's so funny to me. So how can you get upset when you get that? Yeah, you know how can you get upset when you have people that aren't just you, this wasn't forced fed to them. I wasn't on a cover of every magazine. I wasn't all over your radio. And still to this day, I'm not in that position, and people still flock to me and they stay loyal to me. And I mean, like that's almost better. Not in the sense of money. You know what I mean? Like I will break really rather have the money of a really popular artist, uh, artist, but I am so grateful to be on the underground and surviving, you know, I'm so mm-hmm. grateful to be something people choose and are not forced to be down with, you mm-hmm. know, it's not like a mind fucking, it's not like you must be a fan of Peter Moses, <laughs> you must be, you know, it's just like you kind of people choosing it, yeah. they're choosing it, and then people tell me like, you know, I put so many people on, mm-hmm. I get, a, I get the, the, you know, the blessing of word of mouth. Yep. Someone wants to speak to someone else about my music, about my talent, you know, and a lot of times I hear your raw, you know, your raw talent. And that is, man, that's, I can't really trip about people not knowing. I guess in due time, all in God's speed, if people are supposed to know, they will. But I think some of the most amazing pieces of clothing that I have are from designers people no one knows. Some of the amazing music that I have are from people that people really don't know. You know, mm-hmm. it's like some things are really a gift. And if that's yep. what I'm meant to be, hey, I can roll with that. Yep, that's very fair. And I'm definitely one of those people trying by word of mouth, you know, to spread it, you know, spread your music out there and get people... Thank you. Thank you, darling. I appreciate that. And I mean, I don't want people to think that that goes unheard because, you know, I have people, when are you coming to Africa? When are you coming to Brazil? Mm -hmm. When are you coming to Spain? When are you coming, you know, it's just not one person. It's just like more people than I can imagine that would know me in those areas, you know, and it's just like I'm internationally known on the underground and that's just Mm -hmm. from people talking. Yeah. That's a blessing. Yeah. You can't you can't take that lightly, you know. That that doesn't happen for some people that are made of stars, you know, so I'm grateful. Mhm. Okay, cool. And you know, it's really hard for me to, to choose a favorite song from that album, but um I would like to hear your you know, some background on one song, which is uh Caution. You know, I just love the vibe of that song. You know, tell me a little bit about, you know, wh- how you made that one. I mean, most of those records were written in my mirror. Yeah. I had it was on my on my closet doors in my room when I lived in Pasadena at that time when I was writing that album, and I would just fall so deep into myself, you know. Yeah. I would have a beat on and I just be in the mirror and my vibe and my room was all red and I just remember it being such a great color at that time because it inspired me so much. And I would just be in my room and I'd probably look a hideous mess, you know, <laughs> not all done up or whatever, but in my head and in my mind I was on. Mm-hmm. You know, and I would just be in the mirror singing to myself, freestyling, and that's how that, that record came about. You know, Caution was, none of those records were thought of. They mm-hmm. just became what they became, you know. It just was freestyle, and that's pretty much how I write. I just freestyle whatever emotions are on me at the time with the um, hopes that maybe somebody else is going through that same emotion. But I think Caution uh, wasn't anybody specifically, specifically that I was talking about. Mm-hmm wasn't anything that more than the beat pushed me in that direction and, and I, as I was looking into the mirror that's what was coming out mm-hmm. I wish I had something deeper <laughs> <laughs> no problem well you know it, it, I'm impressed that you, you know you write you wrote all the lyrics on the album and uh, you know which is rare these days most artists don't do that so you know where did you develop this talent for writing I don't know <laughs> I used to um my children's father was a rapper, and he would bring home all these great tracks, Jay Dilla, you know, Dr. Dre, I mean, you name it, Pete Rock, I mean, you these great, all these really great, um, great, uh, 
tracks and I would freestyle over them. Oh wow! I would just I would just freestyle singing over the top of these tracks, you know, or I would freestyle over the top of Prince records or whatever, and I would just freestyle over them, not really forming records, I mean actual songs, but just freestyling. Mm -hmm. And I think that honed my skill of uh, singing and songwriting, not so much freestyling rapping, but freestyling singing, freestyling whatever came to mind or whatever. And I wrote a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm going to eventually put together all these, I've been just supposed to do it forever, but it keeps getting pushed back, but I'm going to eventually put together all these different books and journals I've had since like the past 15 years of me just writing, because I just write these thoughts. That's one of the things I like about Twitter, I don't do it as much as I used to, but you can just, random thoughts, you can put them out there in the world, you know, yep. and I used to do that all the time and put together poetry, and not in a deep sense of like, you know, spoken word, but just actually these thoughts and I would write them down and I think that helped me hone the skill of being a writer period mm -hmm. just writing writing because not for any other reason but because I just felt like I needed to put get it out yeah. you know mother gave uh, me and my little sister journals when we were little and I don't know if she meant for us to be you know to write but that's what ended up happening we would just write and mm -hmm. I think that's where that all came from oh, and I was nice. also influenced a lot by um the time period that I was growing up in. It was a lot of talent, you know? Yep. It was a lot of talent. Like, I'm not saying it's not now, but talent gets overshadowed yep. by the commercial business aspect of music. But I think at that time, we just, what we had on the commercial level, it was worth, like, really a lot of talent to inspire you. Mm -hmm. So, I was inspired. Okay, cool. And, you know, Complex Simplicity released back in 2004, and, you know, we're now we're in 2010. And uh, we still haven't had, you know, your next album. Um, have you ever been discouraged over the years since you haven't been able to release another? Never discouraged. Um, can't see? Yeah. <laughs> Never discouraged. Okay. Um, I started making music because my children's father and I fell out, and he was a soap provider for my children and I. And um, he was no longer around. So I found myself because I left, we had this big blowout, and I left the apartment because I didn't want the memories or whatever all that happened there you know mm -hmm. I didn't have to anywhere to stay though because I'm I'm like one of those real artist crazy people mm -hmm. they do things out of pure passion you know and at that time I just felt like I didn't want to be there anymore but not having a place to stay me and my kids didn't have anywhere to stay after that so my kids went to stay with um, their grandmother and I was staying with my best friend mom at the time she had left to go to work and I'm here I'm in limbo you know I wasn't doing wardrobe styling at that point except I just didn't, uh, I didn't want, I had broken my leg, I think that's what happened. I had broken my leg and I was kind of in the healing part of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was confused and I didn't know what to do. And I just cried out to God because that's what I was taught. You know, I don't know what everybody else believes in and I don't judge what people believe in. But I cried out to God. I fell on her bed and I, you know, cried out to God, like, please help me, give me something, give me a way to take care of my children. Mm -hmm. And this is what he gave me. Now, he never said, I never said, make me the, you know, greatest to ever do it, make me the most popular. I didn't say any of that. I said, give me a way to take care of my, and have been able to take care of my children since I started doing this. Yeah. So that's success to me, yeah. you know, and I don't get frustrated with it. I get antsy because I want to put out another record, and mm -hmm. I will. I just get antsy because I want to do it in a, a, cert in a certain way. Mm -hmm. But I've come to the knowledge at this point that, that's something that I just have to do. Mm -hmm. I can't keep waiting for the right situation, the right role, but I just have to do it. And I have to trust and believe in what my presentation is that, and, and make sure I go over it as much as I can to make it as best as possible to me. Yep. To rock myself as much as I can and then put it out there in the world and not think about it after that. Mm -hmm. Whatever happens after that, it happens, you know? Yep. So, um, never frustrated though, just antsy. Okay. And you know, as a single mother, you know, how do you manage to balance your career, you know, with music and everything, and, you know, also touring now, and, you know, raising your children? I'm blessed, man. I have some really wonderful young men in my life. They're wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we moved to Miami, I always had family around. So there was always someone around to be there with them and help take care of them. Grandmother, great-grandmother, sister, me, aunties, you know, all the stuff. Now we're in Miami on our own, but I think we've built up this, our relationship is so good, and the, uh, the dynamics of our family is so understood. Mom's the provider, 
we have to do our job by being, you know, well-behaved children and being responsible. I tell them all the time, you don't have a father. Well, you, they have a father. I would say that like, they have a father, but their father's not around and active in their life as much as I would like him to be and helping me as much as I would like him to. Mm-hmm. So, therefore, you have to be a father to one another, to the twins. Yep. So, when you see your brother doing something stupid that could hinder our family, you have to step up and say, listen, you can't do that. Because that'll mess up the family. you got to play opposition. And that's a lot to put on young kids, but not really. Mm-hmm. Not if it just has to be done. You know, I'm trying to teach them to be survivors. But at this point, in order for us to survive, they can be mature enough to know that they can't do stupid stuff because mama's away working or whatever. Just understood at this point. You know, mm-hmm. I'm a hustler. And that's why I always called my first mix the young hustler because I really was just hustling. Yeah. As much as I love music, I got into it to try to make money to take care of the kids, not to get rich, just to get money to take care of the kids. And then I fell in love with it. Mm-hmm. Even though it was always around, even though it was something I always liked, I fell in love with it after I became a part of it, you know. And um, I hustle. I have to go and hustle a show here or get on this tour, do that, or be in a studio till I don't know what, and then come home and take care of the kids. But this is my life. Yeah. This is what I chose. So through the grace of God, it just all pans out. Like, they don't know anything different, and I don't. Yeah. So, to so us, it's not weird. It's just normal. Huh. It's an interesting story. Hmm. So, you know, when can the fans expect to hear your, your, you know, your follow-up album, The Young Linus Project, you know, realistically? My goal, realistically, is February 2011. That is my goal. I'm, I've had these records ready now. I just have to get them, like, to that point with the mixing and all that stuff, the stuff that cost a lot. That's mm-hmm. what, you know, so I, um, I'm working on making sure all that is taken care of, and it's really going to take a lot of fan support. I'm talking to certain labels, but I'm not waiting on these labels, okay. you know. I'm yeah. not waiting on them. I'm definitely focusing on putting this record out 2011, February, no matter if they roll with me or they're not. So either way, it's going to take a lot of fan support, you know. It's going to take a lot of people that's been saying, hey, we're waiting, waiting to go you know, check it out and spread it around because it might be something I'm doing totally independently. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a problem with that. I really don't. I don't Mm -hmm. have a problem with doing it totally independently. I've been lucky to find sponsors like Tennessee. I'm working on a sponsorship with Jaguar. Um, We're working on a hotel sponsorship. Uh, You know, I just, I've been lucky to get these sponsorships with no deal, with no current, you know, commercially released records. God is good to me. So February 2011 is my goal. And I don't see myself not making my goal. Yeah. Because I'm way too determined. Okay. I'm more determined than I've ever been. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, that's actually not too far off then. I mean, can we can we talk a little bit about uh, what's going to be on the album? Or? Yeah. Um, you know, what kind of sounds, like uh, collaborations, anything like that, production? Just tell me a little bit about it. Um, Production, production like I definitely have Trackademics because I love our vibe together. It's mm-hmm. very fun and refreshing and easy we call it champagne so because it's like something that you should be sipping on something too you know okay. some wine or some champagne <laughs> or something real easy yeah i'm putting it in the air or something you should just <laughs> do it on some cool shit when you listen to our sound i also have a record that i did with cardinal official where he actually produced the record okay and um i have nikki greer who's the artist that is on aftermath on the record as well i'm not quite sure exactly if i'm going to use that record if i haven't finished it completely to hear what it's going to totally turn out to be so I'm still trying to figure that part out mm-hmm. um, I have a record that's produced by a rap deputy called Lady that is absolutely amazing okay. um, I have some new ideas that I haven't completely finished yet but I'm very excited about I've started the very beginning stages of it because like I've been revamping you know I'm in the process of revamping I have a really classic record called Falling For You that Snoop offered to get on because it's his uh, his producer mm-hmm. one of the producers signed to his publishing company and he offered to get on the record for a very small amount of money which I'm very grateful for as, as well as do the video um, yeah. but I don't really want him to rap on it as much as I want him to introduce it oh, okay. you know? yeah. so yeah it's some cool shit you know it's, all, it's a lot about love mm-hmm. a lot about love okay, I mean cool. I don't know I, don't, I try my best not to write a bunch of songs about love but I can't deny myself to write about what's on my brain mm-hmm so it's a lot about love, and um, I also have a record that's called uh, The Show that just speaks about, it's a, to me it has a very Prince vibe, uh, circa love sexy, that whole era, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, or, or Under the Cherry Moon, that kind of vibe. And uh, it just speaks about, 
this life that I'm in. And I look around and I swear to you, sometimes we thought I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm an extra in some type of film. Not so much just the main star, even a co-star, because I'm observing so much of it, you know? Mm-hmm. And I talk about uh, how everybody's on. But when mm-hmm. the lights go off, you know, like, are you still on? Are you still, do you know who the fuck you are, like, once you get out of this whole thing? You know, like, it's confusing to me. Yeah. So I discussed that on the record. It's a good album, though. I'm, I'm very excited about where it is and where it's going. Okay, cool. I'm marking my calendar right now for February 2011. <laughs> yes, that's the goal, baby. You know, that is the goal. And I've set a lot of goals based on, you know, making sure I had a deal. Mm-hmm. But now I'm just like, maybe that's not my path. I'm okay with that. Yeah. You know, I'm really okay with that because I don't want to be, uh, not saying that I don't have, you know, labels that I'm talking to or whatever, but it's just that I want to make sure I'm doing what God has for me. And yeah. my path may be independent, you know. Mm-hmm. It may be totally independent. It's hard. It's not easy. But the more I go, the more sponsorships I get, tend to get. And, you know, with big brand, international brand sponsoring you, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. True. Okay. Well, I, you know, I wish you the best of luck in getting that done, you know, to meet your goal by February. So. Thank you. Just pray mm-hmm. for me, honey. I'll pray yeah. for you. <laughs> okay, I will. Thank you. So actually, that's all, all right, I had uh, prepared. So, is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, I'd just like to um, say thank you to you because I really appreciate it. And I also would like to let all the supporters of uh, my music and all the things that I get into, I would like to let them know that I'm very gracious. I'm so grateful. Um, I don't know how else to explain it. I don't say it just to say it. I say it because I mean it. I'm very, 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 very grateful. I'm grateful to people that are inspired by what I do. I'm great, grateful to the people that inspire me. And um, I love them. That's all. Great. Thanks so much, Chidra. I, I really appreciate you taking the time Thank to listen to you. And, uh, you know, best no of luck with everything. All right. Alrighty. Take care.